interrupting the current neocoronial cricketism to bring you behind the woodshed. This is Cricketude Busting Episode BTWRLM382. And you're going to have to use that number for last week's broadcast because it was vanquished really quickly. So we were able to do some things the inside of Sound Minds to change their title real quick when they saw that it didn't post later on when I posted. It didn't go to YouTube. They changed their title. So maybe going here on out, we're going to have a little bit of a difference going into, you're going to have to look at titles that are kind of weird. Replacing characters for wor- for letters that don't make words so that the censors can't quickly get rid of the broadcast. So I don't know what it really was. A comment to us in the email I got from Grimner was that the uh, YouTube didn't like the information on the COVID, which I guess we ought to have to change our words there, but I'm probably not going to because that's they're listening in on those those transcripts are being used as words as well. And so they pulled it for that reason. But, you know, last week I was touching on something else. It's the underpinnings of how they take you down because they know you better than yourself. That was in there as well. So I don't know what the reasoning is in the cover. They didn't do anything, uh, identify anything specific. And the problem uh, with that is obvious. It's There's no way to pinpoint what it was. And to remind you, if when you're listening to me, you realize I'm pulling from the from the government documents. And so the things that I come up with are not contrary, actually, to what they're stating. I'm actually showing you if you read the documents. If you would just read the documents, you'll see what they're telling you actually opposed to what they're promoting. And so if we get to a point where I, and I'm kind of thinking this over, it might be too late, I don't know about the policies about challenging and all. It caused my mind to start thinking about, if I get to the point where I want to step in to challenge this stuff, and I really don't know that YouTube's worth it, but if I want to, what what am I going to be saying? Again, prepare your mind for having to deal with something before you get there. And I've been on the on the view, and you'll see if you get into Twitter, Uh, you'll see the term uh, unconscionable. I think that's one of the ways to get at it. But the point would be really, do I want to engage this? Can I I engage it? Would would a court allow me to engage this to expose the truth of this because I can't see it being exposed anywhere else? And so that's really my focus on any of these problems. Really, what can I use this as an opportunity to do? But for those of you that want to watch, uh, see next week's broad, uh, last week's broadcast, you're not going to find it on the RLM YouTube. And uh, you'll need to put in uh, BTWRLM381, and you'll need to track down wherever it is, because it, it was posted, it was reposted, it was live streamed at Sound Minds. His is still up. So that's where you're going to have to hear it. You're not going to get it through the RLM uh, account. That's for, that's for the YouTube. We're, I'm on BitChute. You'll get it on the BitChute, my account on BitChute. Uh, you won't find it on RLM there, I don't think. And then you'll get it at Mines. And then whoever is reposting, uh, boosting on Mines, and I thank you to Cowboy Tech and Just In Case for helping out there. The the uh, viewers were a, a lot higher. Whether or not that's, you know, any length of time, I want to get a few thumbs up, so I kind of don't know what, no comment. So I don't know what the real deal is with that. But I appreciate all the help there. And uh, Freedom Press, I just found out, because I did search out the number pound btwrlm381 for last week's broadcast and i found out that a account on youtube called freedom press is also mirroring the sound minds video account a video presentation and so this is what i guess at the point about talking about all this is it's going to take everybody helping out sharing the information to spread it around and lit paying attention because we were able to salvage a couple of those by sound minds being aware enough to change the title in a way that so far hasn't been taken down. So this is the kind of thing we have to be, I talk fluid. You have fluid in this battlefield. we got to be real fluid and real active about how that works. And then to uh, thanks to normalization of ignorance, there, his account, he was reposted to broadcast. His account got pulled immediately like like the RLM account. And uh, But he made uh, all the time he spent for making a three-minute minute compilation to tell you that to go to the RLM webs, uh, reallibertymedia.com com website to get the broadcast through the broad, broadcast broadcaster thank you to that all the time you spent in the thumbnail to tell people and so we hopefully people are be able to bounce around it as they try to censor this information 
I always wonder, if I said that, is it valuable? I think it's very valuable. I think I may be one of the only people that explaining this condition and have been for the entire time trying to get people to do things for themselves and hoping that that's going to give you a mindset. I guess that my mind today is saying, you're going to have to have a different mindset. And I'm going to read something. I'm going to return to something I did last week. I didn't touch it. Uh, I don't know how many people really read the blogcast or links, uh, but the information's not there just because you get to read stories. There's information and all that, as I tell you, especially those of you working, you can copy and paste some of this information if you're going to go certain down certain tracks. I can't there's so many ways to approach, let's say, a habeas remedy or even injunction or a mandamus, whatever, however you want to formulate it. There's so many ways to go. The information that I find I, t- I put on the tabs, uh, I put in the blogcaster, if you read through it, you should be able to copy and paste some things in paraphr- in, to quote positions uh, to give the document you may be creating or even the letter uh, the authority that it needs based in a a, a study, and I would caution about the studies. You've got to make sure that the study ultimately concludes what you want to use it for, or you can strongly show how it couldn't, and because of what? Because they state within the document they don't know. It's all conjecture, and this is where we get continually get back the theme, other theme I'll get to here. When you find out it's not working, and you find out they're going to mitigation strategies that, again, there is no test to identify an infectious agent. They're all outside of their authority. If you if you would reduce this whole thing for all of you even trying now and still not producing your documents, if you would reduce your your focus onto that, you don't have to say a whole lot. And you're you'll be that'll that would start your remedy. That again, and I'm taking the lead of the Ohio case. It explained to us if once the public health authority is outside of its, uh, when it doesn't have, it can't stop the spread, or there's evidence that there is no stopping the spread, there's no mitigation, you can prove that all their measures were in, invalid and they're outside of their authority. I said go to the beginning, go look to see whether or not this, where the state requires, and I think every state does, where it requires that infectious agent, and they haven't done that, they're outside their authority. They cannot develop a mitigation strategy. Why? Because not only do they not know what the infectious agent is, they don't know about that all-important transmission mode. They don't know what, even if they had uh, Godzilla on their bench, they wouldn't even know what it looks like, what it is, in order to, what are we going to do against this thing? And and so they, they got nothing here. And, and this is how this is working. And everybody being quiet on this is just stupefying on my end. I just can't quite get it. But anyway, so thank you for all your efforts to re-mirror, mirror, and, and copy out the, the broadcasts everywhere that we could. Thank you for being fluid, again, in the battle to uh, combat censorship. So far, we've got a couple of last week's broadcasts. This week, we continue on the on the path of this. I also wanted to comment, uh, Lex Van Man over at UCY, your comment, thank you very much. Uh, even though, and I haven't seen you on Twitter, and it looks like your temporary censorship on Twitter has become permanent. I, I think I, I think I did one request to have that changed since I keep getting a blocking page on you on Twitter that says I'm in control. And certainly, that's not the case. I also want to uh, anybody who's listening now. I also noticed a comment. At, I think it was in UCY, Traman von Seltzenman Fluch. Uh, what I'm interested in, and thank you for responding uh, and acknowledging the time at 22, but I noticed, I wanted to know how are the titles that you do on your account. Anybody can go over to that account, if you will, over on YouTube. Look and tell me how those titles were done. They're using characters that look from different languages to make the words, so you can still read the word, but they're in different characters. My thought is, if we're going to have to start changing titles to avoid the censorship, I may have to start to learn to do that. I'd like to know how you do that. Make it easy. I can't just go about copying and pasting letters to to make titles. I'd like to be able to understand if there's a font or a capacity in a word processor or something to do those so that when I type it out, it automatically makes those characters. I just copy and paste them into a lead because I think that may be an option in the future as I'm looking into my first RLM censorship. There's been other censorships. Sound Minds has had a couple. But my first RLM has got, caused me to start looking at the possibility of continuing the, eva- the av- um, avoidance of this censorship that's really not in our control at all. Anyway, enough talk there. More important things uh, are that we are working together to share the information. I appreciate that from everybody who has been doing that. 
on behalf of the information that I broadcast here behind the woodshed. I want to return now quickly to, uh, to I, I guess I should do this out of turn on what I was going to do. Now, that all said, the censorship, I found an article. Uh, you, this is huge, huge, or huge. Trump White House implements executive order on online censorship, prevents tech giants from altering users' speech, free speech, demands transparency on moderation practices. This is something that came down, a, I think, a couple weeks ago. This may come to bear. I'm not sure on the future censorship. Those of you that are interested in stopping that, you may want to focus in on this and see whether or not the complete censorship, the complete denial of a product and of a of a content underneath their theory, uh, undisclosed theory that you're contrary to uh, the officials, even though you're actually using official documents, whether that becomes altering a user's speech when they completely destroy it, they completely don't allow it out or not. I don't know if this is apply. I do want to point out that there may be some things coming to bear to help us. Uh, those of you that are in the censorship side and want to try try your hand at that. Uh, that story came up, and that was the second story I was going to talk about. Part of this is about why I was going to talk about second was because this first thing was returning to last week on the Protocol 5 that I read. I called it Chapter. I didn't do that correctly, but it's Protocol 5. I want to return to that. And it was going to lead into the, the Trump executive order that prevents texts from altering user speech. But that's, remember, a federal uh, executive action. And so we got to worry, look at how they're going to cause the agencies to interfere, be able to interfere with that censorship on the private corporation side. So this is all going to be, Trump's doing some interesting things with executive orders. It's actually political. It pushes things, it starts to force things that the uh, legislative branch has to check if they don't like it. And so this is the, you're watching some gameplay at that level. And in these, as I told you before, when we went from Obama to Trump, better than Hillary, for those of us like myself in the public land product, um, product, general production laws and protecting ourselves, that was going to give us some a time to breathe because it wasn't going to be the agenda on steroids running uh, as they had uh, quite a few years of run up for, with, with Obama. Uh, that's the, we've gotten that reprieve. This is the type of stuff that I told you might come out that we can use. And so we have this uh, potential to look inside that, that I'm asking people to do that are interested in these subject matters that they want to, the wrong they think is made, to make right, that's a censorship by a private corporation on the Internet and how to go about it. So these look at these things. I wanted to call this out. In particular, it came up in, in memory and on my tabs because of uh, the censorship of the last week's uh, broadcast. But I want to return to part of that broadcast and go to the protocols of the elder, learned elders of Zion. Whatever you think about that document, I, I found great utility in it, great instruction in it. I found uh, the the I was affected exactly the way it was intended to affect people. But by going through that, I said, this is why you have to walk these paths. I had an experience through walking through that of the demoralization factor and then Something inside said, but the, I'm not going to let them do that to me. And then, like I characterized it last week, the rise of the phoenix. You come out of the ashes of that of that destruction, that demoralization. And so I want to go return to this, and it, it was um, important to say, but I didn't have a lot of time with all the tabs. i got to do it again this week. I've got a ton of things to go through. Again, objects of, of interest for people that are doing something. I'm not, I'm not a news show. Uh, I don't do it that way. So this is... The tools, uh, actually, what I'm, I'm bringing up. This is a way to look at what, what what the objective on the other side is, and I found a great utility in understanding what their objective is, is, is why you do the counter, why we feel we have to do 180 degrees is exactly explained in this document because they're going, they're out, what they want is your demor demoralization. What you can't be then is demoralized. How you counter is exactly countering what they're saying they want to get done. And so it re that sets us back, if we will, if we'll do this, and I'm explaining maybe more than you should be, you should be demoralized and rise out of your own ashes of this. Is That's what part of my hesitation to even explain it. But we're so far into the problem, and no one's responding. I mean, no one, uh, that I'm feeling more compelled to have to explain some things that I really shouldn't have to, but they got us. They figured us out. I've, I've seen, I think I've seen it. It's in parts of this document. And I'm surprised really right now kind of focused on this protocol. But let me start to read here. I think we'll, you'll, you'll start to hear it, I think, pretty clearly. 
Uh, and I'll just jump down to number seven, then I'll jump in the middle of that, in the highlighted section on the link I provided uh, to uh, Sound Minds. You can put it over there, uh, fa however fast you can get that to. I'm going to read here from the middle, down there below the middle. The principal object of our directorate consists in this. To debilit debilitate, to debilitate, not your hair loss, no, debilitate and public the public mind from criticism, to lead it away from serious reflections calculated to arouse resistance, to distract the forces of the mind towards a sham fight of empty eloquence. And I don't know, I mean, I read that, and my, I just almost start to get chills relative to what I try to do for you, and how each one of those, I and I never, like I said, I don't even remember this when I read it. It must be just a part of my psyche now. What I try to do is at least those three things, countering those three things in getting you to respond, think a certain way and respond a certain way. Don't do a sham fight. Find and focus on the thing. And that's why I say make the, get the wrong that you principally feel, that you even in spirit feel is wrong that you need to make right. You defeat this whole thing. You start to go down that path. Don't accept the noise outside as a that was made and designed to distract you. You all know this, but I don't think people appreciate how much it starts to work. It'll get to the next paragraph here or so, how it gets to cause you to be dysfunctional. And I don't mean dysfunctional in yourself, just not functioning properly. Like I said, knowledge is not power. It's proper response that becomes based on that knowledge that become can become powerful. And I say can as a condition because sometimes the enemy is much larger than you. And right now they've got us to the, uh, we should have them to the wall because they pressed us on the worst. Uh, but what that did is imposed upon us the obligation to defeat all of our, um, almost all of our infirmities reg relative to f stopping a trespass, uh, and that's nice, an invasion, an occupation, or a complete destruction which these people, whoever they are, they're using these methods to do that. They do that. So here we are. The principal object of the director to consist of debilitate the public mind by criticism, right? To lead it away from serious reflections calculated to arouse resistance, to distract the forces of the mind towards a sham fight of empty eloquence. And I, my, I don't know why my mind keeps, I read that and my mind goes to the Second Amendment. That's the, you speak highly of that, but you don't understand that's not, that's the, empty, empty eloquence uh, asserted against something that can't be stopped by that right. We have a different thing to do. In all ages, the people of the world, equally with individuals, have accepted words for deeds, for they are content with a show and rarely pause the no to note in the public arena whether promises are followed by performance. Therefore, we shall establish show institutions which will give eloquent proof of their benefit to progress. That's progressive positioning as well. It's a content with a show that you focus on. This is the enter homo entertainus. I mean, it's right here. I didn't read, I made that up before, but this is talking to that. And the words, ex accepting words for deeds. What have I pointed to in the Libra Code? You know them by their deeds, not what they say. They don't have to tell you that we're in a martial law. They don't. The government doesn't have to tell you anything, actually. You're supposed to be the informed public. And I, it's saying here that they're going to attempt, they're telling you here, you will be distracted. Most everything you watch coming out of those, those uh, instrumentalities will be a distraction. And so it's back on us to fix this, find the core path that we need to follow and resolve it even in our ignorance of it, that's where we the, the stiff learning curve comes. But we can do it. We're not stupid. That's the whole thing. This is fascinating. And you, I'll tell you again, until you jump in there, and, and let's say if I use the example of being dis demoralized by the fact that someone knows you better yourself and in control, and yet that's not sufficient enough for them to stop you, you rise out of, out of the ashes of that, of your own re realization of, the, of, the of your destruction, and you come up, and you rise like the phoenix to look at their inadequacies and their incapacities and that you have the power to prevail. When you see that yourself without instruction, you'll have the internal spirit to move forward. Now, and I would say if it's not this document, find other documents that do that to you. I guess from it worked out, seemed to work 
completely different uh, fine for me. Don't be afraid of the destruction. You're bigger than all that. These are people these are people in the world that want to hurt you. However this document came, it came with some very immense profound truth. And so here we are. They want to give you a show. You can you are given the opportunity to participate. Homo entertainus is sitting right there producing Homo ignoramus as I pro- said on a previous broadcast. We're going on now. We we shall assume to ourselves the liberal physiognomy of all parties, of all directions, and we shall give the physiognomy a voice in orators who will speak so much that they will exhaust the patience of their hearers and produce an abhorrence of oratory. In order to put public opinion into our hands, we must bring it into a state of bewilderment by giving expression from all sides to so many contradictory opinions and for such length of time as will suffice to make the goyim lose their heads in the labyrinth labyrinth, and come to see that best thing is to have no opinion of any kind in matters political, which it is not given to the public to understand because they are understood only by him who guides the public. This is the first secret. I'll stop here. Always more to read. I just want to point out, they want your bewilderment. They want your political inaction. They want you to not respond and be in a a division amongst your society to allow the plan to continue. Now, we talk about politics here. I don't talk about politics because they're not actually talking about politics. That's the tool. As I pointed out sometime yesterday in Twitter, the politics divide. Someone made a comment: politics divides people. I said the seed of divisions in people. The politics is just the fertilizer. We can allow it to be that, or we can suppress that part in us. And how I figure, I think we do this because we are under attack. Is we have to put ourselves to task. We put ourselves to task. We don't get led by the nose. And so here we have an example that I didn't read last week, so important. They want your bewilderment. They want you looking at the other side, uh, where you stick the other side and say, well, how crazy those people are, how insane, and then don't move, don't respond. Don't understand the dynamic. And I've said you can't be ignorant of that dynamic, and you can't be ignorant of the establishment that's actually sitting there to use for your defense. And so you can't not act. They want you to be dysfunctional. They don't want you to function. If they, However they get that, they win. And so anyway, lots in here, even more than I'm even talking about. I really don't have the time in a way to go through this. I want to keep providing information to people that will, that need it, that may not understand it, how this all works. What is expected of them? If you, if they need your bewilderment, it's up to you not to be bewildered. Not wildered beast. You are the beast, the human, but don't be that. Everything you hear, I realize in this document, everything that they stand for, everything that they say they assume unto themselves, assume, they better not assume. And since they only assume, I am fully powerful to empowered to not uh, allow that. And it's the way that they take you down is explained in this document that you do what everyone understands. You've got to go 180 degrees. This is why. Because they're attempting to get an outcome, and you have to counter it. The only way to counter it is go the opposite direction. So it's not just that you feel like you have to. No, you have to, but it's not just in, but the point is you have to identify what 180 degrees, what's anti, what they're attempting to do and get you to do, or to be, or to think, or any of that stuff. So here for me, it was the state of bewilderment. You look over, out over today, over the over the globe, the world, and you watch this stuff, and it's just like, how does this, I mean, what is this thing? How is this going on? Look at the insanity and all that. That's what they want you to do. They want you to just continue asking that and be bewildered, be bewildered about that and be divided amongst yourself. Anyway, that's a core thing here, and we are, the point about all this is we are in control of whether or not, whether we believe this or not at this point, we are in control of how much their plan can be executed not as a their these guys their plan as the you, tools they use to get a plan to push through we are we have the say in that we have 
the response to make. And the lack of response that fulfills their need, if they want to keep you bewildered, divided, not acting, not, not uh, working toward taking away their assumptions, they get uh, the, the people with the plan win, is what I've told you before. You become part of the show they've created. This is the fascinating thing. The fact of the bewilderment, the vision, the non-response, the non-proper response, the focusing on elo empty eloquence, the sham of that, you focus on all that and even step back from that because you don't want to enter in and do nothing more, that's what qualifies the plan that they're doing. That's what qualifies the method that they're using that I talked to, broached a little bit uh, last week. And so I just I wanted to go back to that, spend a little bit of time on here. To me, I read these words totally different. I read them as the as all the needs they have that they'll get if you continue in your animal nature that they exploit, and our ability to step outside of that containment will be how we prevail. And until we do, we will not, and we cannot. There's just not a way to do it. And so it's it's disappointing to me. I look around and see all the division. It's disappointing to watch society uh, in different states of bewilderment, essentially, over this thing with, that they've invented that I told you was coming. You know, again, I couldn't exactly say it was COVID, but I told you there was this new lock, this extension of 9-11. They really pulled that off. They're doing exactly what I would have thought. I have not been a surprise on that, and all along, since the beginning of the year, I've been attempting to be a place where you can get the the some answers to what you need where you need to focus in order to stop it for you because as i said this is a very interesting dynamic that we have they can't stop each one of you they can't stop your choice your choice is either to be bewildered or think you and are not bewildered and point to the insanity which do nothing more is the bewildered just engaging and allowing the bewilderment Instead of stepping back and figure out, okay, where's the linchpin to this whole thing? And now I'll bring in my contribution. I believe it's, I'm the only one that puts it out there at this point, And I'm the only one continuing to talk about it. And it might seem trifly, but it's not. And it's this hashtag I've been throwing out says there is no test. And I look at this condition and to me, that's the linchpin. Until this whole thing can be proven through the infectious agent and certified to they have nothing in order to keep you bewildered relative to the pandemic so called there's another dynamic going on with the riots and things that's a different type of thing along the same lines it's compatible it's bringing everything together so let's just I'm just focusing here on this thing that affects you see the the riots don't affect you necessarily the pandemic does generally and so we then find out the specificity, whether or not you can move through that. It's coming down. I'll get to the next tabs here soon. When I jump, I'm going to jump through something here. But your lack of response and lack of resistance in the proper way is allowing this condition to come through, that this protocol explains it to you, that you, have, you are the key to stopping it. You have the choice. You can be bewildered or, or not be bewildered and then not respond, and you're still fulfilling the outcome. And that's kind of the key right there for us. So to me, this so-called as pandemic condition, this fraud upon societies around the world that apparently no one knows how to stop, they can't even understand to use the hashtag there is no test and then press their local jurisdictions to certify it. I can't get anybody to do this. Not even the people that I work with. This is fascinating. They meet up with resistance inside the government, and that's it. That's the end of it. No one wants to push this to the wall. And I'm telling you right now, if you don't push this to the wall, that wall, you're not going to get the traction that you need. That's just the way this is going to work. And so we have no test. Do I have to worry about whether or not I'm bewildered? Do I have to worry about whether I'm divided? Whether I have to worry about whether I'm even subject to anybody's opinion of me? When I take the direct action to inquire upon the black and white objective basis and whether it was fulfilled in someone who, who so-called took an oath, who promised, who is in the office and can be held to that oath when they didn't follow the code that they took an oath to follow. If you don't argue in there, 
and knock out their authority from the beginning, they get to bring all this bewilderment on you. And then you get stuck in cases, you get stuck in deaths versus cases, you get stuck in masks, social distancing, whatever the heck they, it is they want to put on you. And coming in here, we're getting the news if we didn't know it before. It's uh, intended to be permanent. Again, it's the extension of what Greta didn't do in Agenda 21. They're going to get you to do. And you're letting them in that outcome. And the way they've thrown this thing together, causing bewilderment amongst the society, I believe, until I'm shown different, is answered by just simply going local and saying, can you show me the certification for the infectious agent that you believe is causing an epidemic? And remember, for those of you doing this, it's not, that's the, not, once they do and they certify to it, then you look at how, whether or not they uh, could have. Uh, there isn't a test, so I don't know what the other answer would be. Let's say they, uh, let's say they produce one and you don't want to argue that. The test for an infectious agent isn't the test proving what? The next step. The transmission mode. Until they've identified that, they don't know how to fight this thing, even if when they can identify it. So when you understand the process, I've already got them back two steps. Even if they answer the first one, I've got another step to, that they have to qualify. And when you start understanding, this is like, to me, this is just alternative dispute resolution in practice on a global scale now, if we didn't know it before. They've, all, they've thrown out an alternative, and they're, and they're doing the Hegelian dialectic on y'all, and you want to say, oh, I know about that, and I won't succumb to it, and everyone's succumbing to it. It's fascinating. And yet that's all they're doing. And the counter, the antidote, the anti-their attention, the 180 degrees out, is to bring what? The objective basis. They're not speaking in law. They don't speak in truth. They don't speak in fact. They'll produce lies everywhere. So what do you bring as an antidote? What is your vaccine? It's the black and white objective basis an official is obligated to. The law. This law so many people will just dismiss. That's how we stop. Alternative dispute resolution is what they do in all these uh, you call the Hegelian dialectic principles of breaking you up in groups, inviting you to a meeting in groups, and they tell you what they're going to do. They take your little notices on, your comments on cards. They filter through what they want. And then when they get the meeting done, they write up that everybody was consistent and in consensus. And then they get you out and then they get their policy through because what the requirement was of these invaders was that they gave you a notice and due process time. And they gave themselves a, an opportunity to plausibly say you involved yourself. And this is what we all decided. All right, that you're in a global Hegelian dialectic ADR process, from what I can tell. So let's jump on over to something that moves us out of this COVID into something new that's very important. Some old news coming back up, something that uh, brings me up. I bring that to the ADR because through the Jefferson Mining District and what we do with why the di one of the reasons why the district was was formulated was to have miners in particular, but producers generally have a say in the administrative destruction of the productive power of this country. And there's a little provision in the law that provided for that. When I saw that, I said, we need to get the status of a government as miners, and we need to use this to protect us. And so that was, and that is part of this defeating the ADR process. This is part of getting in between what was the status quo capacity building that they had done, the interlopers, the trespassers, the foreign agents in our, in our, on our soil, and it was our ability to get inside that and make a record that showed on an authoritative level, a, a governmental level, that they hadn't fulfilled the black and white. Okay, so th this is a methodological use, an understanding of what it was, and a what? And we got rid, if I can put it in the terms of Protocol 5, we removed the bewilderment that was caused by offering three or four different alternatives that had no basis in law. Once we expose that, the only basis that's left that's valid, and, ho and then you use the savings clause to preserve you, and that's where the Virginia Posterity Article 3 or Section 3 part comes in. You have the savings clause that allows you action, and you have a say to stop what's coming against you. The black and white for the public health agencies relative to a health emergency is the assessment and certification to the infectious agent that they attach to a disease that is the 
epidemic or outbreak initially, and you'll see some of this coming out in these documents I'm having, they talk about how this is working, that we, you can get inside that. It's the same thing. Only you don't need to be a governmental entity. You just need to be a, someone who steps up and says, here was the black and white. Here was what you're not supposed to trespass. This is where you shouldn't have put in your adjunct ideas and opinions to alter my way of life. And you needed to follow due process here, at least, and then that requires that you needed to do something factual. And what are you doing? You're taking away the bewilderment. You're taking away the question. You're taking away the opinion. You're taking away the ability to have an opinion. It's not my opinion that there is no test. And that's proven that there is no certification. I'll get back to the where I want to go. <laughs> Going through the this coordination, interfering, realizing it would interfere with this ADR process, which you all understand is the Hegelian dialectic, and the, the I can't remember all the words that were used. It doesn't. I don't focus on it. I can't remember the meetings that they used to have for the Agenda 21, which you thought were, you know, you knew you saw them, but you didn't understand what they were doing. Uh, the governmental power gives us in the miners with the mining district the ability to inter interject and actually intercede on behalf of producers. That's why we expanded from just miners to production. If you go to the JeffersonMiningDistrict.com website, you'll you'll see we we've adjusted. We it doesn't matter if you protect a miner, you're protecting the whole class of the foundation of the United States of America. You have to be able to produce as a society, and that's supposed to be protected against everything else in society. And every encroachment by the foreigner inside our land, inside our soil, built in over years, has worked to interfere with that, and they do it without any black and white. And so, moving in, focusing in on land use, then I became, you become keen to things like the Bundy, Clive and Bundy case. And I won't, I'm not going to get into all of that, I just want to keep up the news on that. At this point, the appeal court upholds a dismissal of the Clive and Bundy case relative to the the charge that uh, they were criminals for doing what they were doing on their land as producers of beef and grain, I think, or I think they do beef generally, that we now see here an update. The Federal Court of Appeals on Thursday upheld a decision to throw out the felony conspiracy and weapons charges against Bunkerville rancher Clive and Bundy, two of his sons and another man. Before U.S. District Judge Gloria Navarro's July, January 2018 dismissal, which the government appealed, she found that the federal government improperly withheld evidence. Prosecutors had willfully withheld video surveillance maps and FBI interview information in violation of due process required by the U.S. Constitution, the judge found. Let me just interject. Here's your due process failure and by the Constitution required. So you see they're referring to it. The Ninth Circus did so, not surprising, but surprising because of the nastiness. Of the, 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 again, we call it the Ninth Circus Court of Appeals for a reason. But it underpins the prosecution's willful disregard of due process in this case, which if we had, well, we did go through and do some things in the background, but there's people. There were, there were even Clive and Bundy reticent to accept what we were explaining to attempt to keep him out of here. Notwithstanding that, the appellate court found that the judge, in fact, they say here, quote, we can find no grounds for concluding that the district court abused its discretion in dismissing this indictment with prejudice. Judge J. Bybee wrote in a 54-page decision pointing out that Navarro conducted several hearings about evidence violations, quote, lesser sanctions, such as continuance to allow the defendants to review discovery on declaring a mistrial and starting over, would have given the government an opportunity to strengthen its case at defendant's expense. Uh, I'm going to end here. You can read more. Again, there's a lot to learn, a lot to see in the dynamic that there's still things that you can refer to. And I've told you due process is one of the ones you want to really get tied on and focus. It's why I focused in on the due process relative, uh, relative to the infectious agent and the failure of every jurisdiction globally, from what I can tell, uh, to identify that. So we don't even get to the transmission mode, which is all important for the mitigation, which is the third step, which they, uh, they offer any one of those and they get outside of their authority. In this case, you 
Now, have a prosecution in the state, the all-powerful government, that starts to withhold someone's ability to, to see evidence against them, or maybe for them, and, and now, you, now you interfere with the perception of justice. And this was so egregious that at least the appellate court at this point has said there was no discretion uh, abused here. On a willful, remember, willful. But now here's what the, you got to look inside this case. And I responded, I got this information from uh, Vincent easily. Uh, and I just respond, well, uh, well, looky, looky there. We find no grounds uh, for concluding that the district court abused its discretion in dismissing the indictment with prejudice. But if you read down farther, the case, the judges, uh, the Supreme Court, the appellate court judges would not find fault with the U.S. Attorney, and I say, but, quote, does not cast aspersions on the professionalism of the uh, dot, 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 of the U.S. Attorney's Office is a cat box cover-up. How can you have a, that there was a, the same decision that says that, that there was no discretion, abu uh, discretion abused when you find willful withholding? How does that jive with there was no aspersions cast on the professionalism U.S. Attorney? is the cat box cover-up. And you, I, I point this out to show you, within this condition, how tough it is, this is also with the Hage case, how tough it is for right now, in the environment that's going on, that you have to press the wall to clear violations of due process before you're going to be heard, and even then, the government gets the benefit of a doubt. You don't get the benefit of a doubt, but they do. And again, this points me to tell you, understand that dynamic. This is not in the world you thought where justice and, and all this other stuff existed. This is in a condition. And so why I suggest to you how you point out certain things in order to start making the pressure so they all they can do is say this in a footnote, that this does not cast aspersion on the professionalism. They don't give it, they don't come out, they likely will not come out and completely take them down. They needed to. Anyway, this is a dynamic that you're up against. If you don't speak to eliminate their ability to say that, you give them the ability to say that. And they cause this condition in us that we don't understand. And that, that, that condition I've found over a couple of decades of looking at all this and watching, you know, doing lawsuits and watching people do lawsuits and having to refine my own a, a, attack, if you will, my own strategies, uh, has been very clearly made because of the way this case comes out to not say their attorney general's office, the office in the military general's office of law, could be wrong. So I'm pressing again on don't know them by what they say. Look at the deeds. They didn't, on a willful disregard of due process in the prosecutor, it wasn't casting aspersions on professionalism. I don't know how that's this not a problem on its face, the mere appearance of impropriety on those on the two uh, points. One is that they found that the willful that, that willfulness decision was not without the not was within the discretion, and then to find there was no professionalism problem. How about a lawful problem? How about this? There's not supposed to be this appearance of, of impropriety, no matter what the motive. They don't even touch all that. You have to put that in. Now, they're gonna, they'll have an answer for that. They'll try to. But I'm not talking about where most people will respond, well, there's no justice. My view anymore is just make the record so people can see it. Look how ignorant we are as a society. Don't walk in making assumptions and opinions on things that don't actually exist and you think ought to be. Extract it for that system that's harming you or going to harm you or others. If you have it in you to be empathetic or sympathetic to that. That's why I'm kind of interested that the people who have been in the in legal fights uh, and trying to assert rights and assert their fundamental freedoms haven't jumped back in on this on this this fraud, this pandemic fraud. It, it's it's ripe for all of us that know how to do the paperwork if you can find and position yourself uh, to do it properly. And that's the other analysis. How do you, what do you do properly? Where, where is that for you? Now, those that are, are out wearing masks, I don't see how that's not a problem for you. 
if you've kind of isolated yourself like a lot of uh, like I have, your interactions really limited, and so it becomes a, that does become a bit of a trouble. But most people aren't aren't as isolated, if you will. And so, uh, moving on again on public lands and production and natural resources, the fight that was put on and the subjection of the criminal charge on innocent people and then the failure to provide due process is what I want you to see that even with all the willfulness, the court would not come up and say that their soldiers did anything wrong was speaking to me, the Libra Code. Not their words, look at their deeds. Yeah? Their deeds are they will not address, they will not reprimand at all their soldiers to do things against innocent people, essentially, because until the, if you're presu given you're presumed innocent, and that's the other question here, given you're presumed innocent, this is a done against, this was done against innocent people. And the, the court said, well, we're not going to allow our soldiers to do that to innocent people. Is the more of the thought I want you to understand as you address the problem, not as a fear, not as this over oppression, that there's things you can bring up and say. You can be complete, state your state your case more completely to eliminate their ability to create the question. And I see this so many times. People make assumptions of what they think they know instead of just going back and saying, well, what does the black and white interpreted rule say about what I need to bring as elements? I was just talking with a colleague of mine relative to some uh, some issue, and I said, you know, you you can you can avoid you can claim or declare that you, you can challenge that you're not that you have no no property in the state, but there's a presumption to value. You have to denounce or deny that and challenge that as well. Uh, again, uh, paraphrase off the top of my head, you deny there's any evidence, not just of the of a property subject. In, uh, in the state, but there's no value relative to a legal identity in the state as well. And so they have all these things which are really unfair at some level to impose upon you under presumption of you're innocent, but you're not presumption of the innocence to not have to answer into a violative due process or a violating oriented system. You don't have the freedom from that. And so you're going to have to, all y'all, all you folks are going to have to up your game if you to engage these people. And whether or not it ends up going exactly what I'm saying or not, it's going to be going in the direction that I'm suggesting in a large part at this point, from what I can tell. But to moving on, public uh, public land, uh, the production, natural resources, another big case came through. It's ongoing. It's fluid. The Dakota Access Pipeline now can keep running amid the legal fight in the U.S. court. This is a temporary thing. Uh, the, the, the court asked for uh, some more briefing relative to a scheduling. This was really an administrative discussion relative to the case. They lifted the potential ban on the stopping the pipeline because of this. I haven't gotten any information that they put it back on. I just want to assure there's a process that goes on. I told you at the time I didn't understand how they could actually stop that pipeline once it was in and going, and there was no actual evidence of any harm, that the process really should just continue and the uh, and the, the study being done because why? The same thing as finding the infectious agent. If you find a problem, then you have to have a the transmission mode. What's the specific potential or actual, not potential now, what's the specific harm that's caused by a specific thing and we look at mitigating that doesn't exist in this case. So there's still that other, it's still the same process I told you about. There is no test. We still then have to find transmission mode before we get to mitigation. This is working in the Dakota Access Pipeline. So I told you, I don't understand how they could shut the pipeline down, even though it was found that there was insufficiency done in the, in the NEPA process. Fair enough. And so they've returned this case back. They're going to let, they're not going to let that order to shut down the pipeline stand, at least to today, when I, uh, I didn't sit, I mean, today, since the last time I looked for this issue, that pipeline's going to be kind of running along. It's, it's a pipe. It's running stuff. Unless there's a, unless there's a problem in it, this is, that's the status quo at this time. NEPA wouldn't stop that. NEPA is not made to stop things. It's made to identify potential harms to mitigate. And I've talked to you over and over and over and over about this. And this is really the risk benefit thing, the risk management. It happens in the health, uh, the thing that we're, we're, that people are suffering right now. They do risk benefits. 
you have to eliminate their ability to make, first of all, you eliminate their ability to even have the right to make the assessment. Then you attack, once they get that, then you attack them on whether or not the mitigation strategy would work. If they don't have a transmission mode, they can't describe that anything would work, right? If you get this point. And so everything they're doing in absence of a proof, a scientific proof now, for the transmission mode is can't be said to help st uh, mitigate or stop the spread. And the proof, and you look, as I tell you to use the news, the proof is, even with them cooking the book, it's even better, the proof is it's not fixing anything. That's the proof for the failure of the mitigation strategy. And likely what I say, the failure starts because there is no test. And so if you understand this short uh, steps of lineage of chain of authority and identify them instead of getting lost in all the noise of it all and be bewildered by how it continues and be divided in, the, in your in your own self to not respond you will overcome this this plan that they have on you that's working great at this point uh, getting back to the dakota access it's going to open back up it fulfills what i didn't understand why they shut down a working pipeline that's not actually causing a problem because of NEPA. NEPA is a supplemental law to other laws. Again, how do I know all this? Is what we do at Jefferson Mining District, what I do is researching and authoring the documentation, which we put in as comments that have to stand in the face of scrutiny of law. And I made, you know, we take our successes where we can. We did that to, just to show you the Clean Water Act. This is underpinning this Dakota Pipeline thing. The Clean Water Act, where they didn't have a, deci a decision on uh, a definition of what waters the United States was, and they expanded it to every prairie pothole. We commented on that. They, the states sued. I told our guys, we don't need to spend any money or time. Let's let the states do it. We'll watch what their arguments were. The arguments went in proper enough. The answer came back exactly what we'd said in a comment. In fact, it was kind of spooky. Not in exact words, but principles were, were all fulfilled in our comment. Point is, you have to engage at the point where they can, where, where you can and the way you're supposed to. I understand a bit about this stuff in the, in this water and law and this public land law and property rights, most importantly, and grants and, you, and the relationships that are established. And I wish more people would understand this. And it's what uh, Clive and Bundy doesn't understand even, even though we've talked to him. And Ammon Bundy doesn't understand him. We've talked to him. And this is, a, I look around in my life over time, uh, talking about pushing a noodle, a, a wet noodle uphill is what I'm looking at. And then, I, then we run square flat-faced into this pandemic fraud. This alternative dispute they've thrown on you, and nobody seems to understand how to deal with it. And it seemed to me pretty simple. Just apply the black and white. They call it adjunct policy. You want to read about this? Go to Jefferson Mining District. Let me see if I can remember now. Left side, go down to our consensus policy. You read it. And read the quote that we highlight in one of the documents there. I don't remember now if the document's there to go to or not. But they'll tell you what they do. And that is, the, you have to create the antidote to that, the vaccine to that, the the counter to that. That's the thing that causes the the. Uh, assumption of authority that doesn't exist that violates the law and they don't care when you have a horde like that coming to, to take out your nation you better put on you better put on a whole lot of wisdom vast and i don't see that happening and i can only hope i'm offering it weekly behind the woodshed it just as a start if nothing else do something folks help yourself uh, courts that halt the Dakota Atlas pipeline shut down as legal fight goes on and forward. This was another link I wanted to present. Uh, they state this in slightly different ways. It's interesting when you look between the two statements, you can start to see more of the picture in the news, what I call the notice. Uh, and I don't want to stick too much on all this stuff. Just to let you know, there's a process. You don't stick to the process, you're going to get your stuff run down. You deny the process, you're going to get your stuff that run down. Our experience is, is you, you keep sticking at them inside the process that you can identify. And to these people that would, these attorneys and these stakeholders using stocking horses, as I've talked all about before, when you come in with the objective basis, you shut them all down. You shut them all down. In fact, all these years we've been working on the highways, I have got I can't prove it yet. I shouldn't even say much, but it may be that we may be getting the roads, county roads back on a on a federal 
Forest Service system-wide condition? I don't know yet. I was just given that information yesterday. No proof quite yet. A highly regarded and respected and truthful source. The point is, as we've been doing this for years, addressing this through defeating the very thing, that defeating the ADR process that's on you with this pandemic, so-called, with any one of these, with the stock, with the, with the tribes being misled about what their rights and misleading about their rights until they focused in on what the NEPA was supposed to do relative to the rights, and it wasn't even on their land, if you get that one. It wasn't even relative to much of anything other than a supplemental law to some other right that was going on relative to what? Production and natural resources. And so you got to look at the whole thing. Don't get emotional like what happened on me when I tried to address all this when that thing went through. No, we start looking at it very carefully. Otherwise, we're going to be used. Things will be used against ourselves. And we'll be guided by the nose over the cliff like we're, like we're watching happen with this pandemic. I'm just stunned. And so I got a link here to the, to the um, decision on that. You can read it. It comes out of the district. For the, it's the United States Court of Appeals for the District of Columbia Circuit, of all places, for those of you that understand jurisdiction, how this is working through and where it works through. And so, moving on, I mean, there's so much to this, guys, I don't even know. Now, moving on and transitioning a little bit more uh, into, again, all of this team to be this ADR, Alternative Dispute Resolution, the implementation, we call it Agenda 21. We see the 2030 fold. Uh, the 2030 goal folding right before our eyes. No one's stopping it. They've thrown in many more uh, things to cause bewilderment, and we stay in our bewilderment. We don't focus in on uh, any substantial point of of that we can take out their Achilles heel. None of us, it seems, wants to look at all that. We want to continue in our bewilderment, our discussion, our division. Uh, yet, and this whole thing is now bringing on this condition where they're attacking your they're attacking your your production. They're attacking ranchers. That's your food stores, if you haven't figured that one out, whether or not you like Blendy or not. Uh, there's uh, people out there that do that for you, and whether you appreciate that, I don't know. Maybe you're a vegan and, and then want them all dead. I don't know. But that point is that they're doing a service for people, not just select people who are uh, self-centered. There's an entire thing goes on around production in this country. It's the foundation, even if it's only one to ten, one to four percent of the population. Those people provide everything for us if we're, if we're not stealing it from other nations who do provide for us. And that's another problem. But anyway, moving into what's coming on is a condition you see within the alternative dispute resolution condition. Here, here's an alternative. We're going to throw a false pandemic on you. See how you handle that. You, will you agree to our suggestion? And you watch as society agrees, and if you don't actually believe, respond, you agree. So the consensus is yes. And so what they're doing with this is now we know inside there was contact tracing and all this digital connection. Uh, this was stated early on. In fact, I have a document that so, shows that. But beyond K-R-O-O-K -O -O -K with O-O -O with a line through it, and this is that method I was telling you about, that O with a line through it. You, knew, you see you can read the word crook, but it's not really O's is the language font system I think I'm wanting to look forward. If anybody can identify that. If I spell the word, can it change into characters that are not letters, but I can still read the word like this is an interesting example. Beyond crook, even more Wi-Fi chips vulnerable to eavesdropping based for your information. Here's the point about all this. I don't care about it all. I told you hardware is going to be your problem. When I was into hardware, there can be innumerable good faith problems in hardware. You can't unbake the chip. And that's not even counting the software. When someone locates that, when someone learns what I was told early on when I started to learn a bit of computer programming, it was in machine language, assembly language. I was told way early on, you need to stay here. No, be, you need to, someone needs to be doing this because when you know how to do this, you know how to do anything. You instruct the machine how to work at every, every bit level. And so that told me that and not many people understand that, but that we are still here and there's still people that know how to do that. And I think that's how they do this. Uh, that into the hardware chips, there's vulnerabilities. People are there to exploit them. Whatever language they're using now, I don't know. So-called higher machine languages are not higher. They're, they're actually less. But 
like higher education. It's not better. It's it's less, but you don't really perceive that. It's even in electronics, the same type of setup. But a Black Hat USA 2000 ESET researcher delved into the details of the crook vulnerability in Wi-Fi chips and revealed that similar bugs affect more chip brands than previously thought. One that I got, I saw why I put this out here wasn't just Broadcom, but it was what was the other one? The oh Qualcomm. This is all your not all, but this is a lot of your phones. And so again, you want to rely on where they're going, contact tracing and all that, and you don't think that someone's going to have a line in on your accounts that they're making that they want to make a record for your social credit and all what you where you tracked and where you traced, and they want to set someone decides that you are their object. And you don't think they can jump in and see what's going on and or hack your system. And in this digital world they've created for us to plug us our, plug ourselves in, so that whoever's a quiet wards document, you'll find in the blogcaster. Every blogcaster has it. This is another reminder for me. I could go on and on with you. In fact, i got dozens and dozens of tabs about our vulnerabilities that keep getting pushed down because they're not as important. They're very important, but not relative to what I think you need to know to protect yourself against this invasion of your life, your way of life, by insane psychopaths underneath a name called COVID-19. Anyway, so here's a digital world insecurities now. We now see them right to your phones, if you didn't think about it before. More proof. For those of you that are looking, if you need more information, you really have to learn, start to put your mind and, and cut your ties where you can, cut as many as you can from this and start to learn how to keep their authority off you. You're not going to do it by arguing with them. You, all of those you, you go of those you go into court and you try to argue with a judge. You see recently how fast that works, how good that works for you all. You can't think that way. You have to understand what I've been suggesting repeatedly is jurisdiction and authority from that, and whether or not they can gain it in any of its parameters. And after you've done a broad spectrum, you can come up with a short paragraph. That denies that, and more not a denial, because the denial works procedurally as a motion to demur, a demur, and that's actually accepting the jurisdiction. And here, they have us in a legalism, and everyone wants to roll their eyes, or I'm not going to do all this. If you understand it, stop rolling your eyes, you'll be able to go everywhere and respond to them in ways that you confound them. And you set yourself in a, at at least a stalemate, at least. Where they're going to be injecting you, hauling you off to camps to keep you isolated, and where they're going to keep you supposedly wearing masks all the time, how they're going to enforce that, I don't know, it doesn't matter. That they think they can tell you, and you're not going to respond to that? That they can haul you out when they just happen to see you, like the helicopter that flew over the party in L.A., and they, oh, there's hundreds of people in this house. And the first response is, we're going to cut the water and the power, but there's cops out front. When they start hauling you all off, are you going to be absent, what I'm telling you? I'm going to say likely, but I'm hoping not. That's why I'm telling you. You bet. You have to have a better thought about what's going on. You're going to have to understand how to address their underlying points that they think are authority. It, it, in a way, it hasn't come down on us yet. It's been building. But your communications, your accounts, your digital cash is all sitting vulnerable to these these uh, hacks. These abilities to engage your hardware and intercept and or modify it. Moving on now, non-invasive nerve stimulation boosts learning of foreign language sounds. I've told you before, they come with a really cool thing. Underlying this is the very uh, serious problem if you continue to research it. Very interesting. Non-invasion nerve stimulation boosts learning of foreign language sounds. This was a very limited test. They had four, I think it was Mandarin Chinese sounds that are very hard for English-speaking people to discern. Uh, they were able to find out that if they put a certain nerves, uh, a stimulus, a non, con, non-direct stimulus, electrical stimulus to the vagus nerve through the ear, they could, it would allow a certain percentage. In this trial, you'll read about 15% of the people were able to be trained to hear the distinction that is not very easily heard quicker and twice as fast if they stimulated the vagus nerve with this non-invasive technique so that you would learn better. And they, pro- and they said in the her- part of this study, if I remember right, they said that they, they found evidence that 
the amount of information, the amount of stimulation, the type may have to have been increased because there were some people that appeared that they might have the ability to be affected, but that, but that it, they didn't test for the higher voltages, which I was very interested in. It ends up, if you look through, I think it ends up being they did it at 25 hertz, which wasn't proven to be optimum. Now we're thinking resonance here, folks. I want you to think in resonance. And they did a 150 millisecond spike, which is actually a square wave. If you read fall, I was wondering whether or not they use a square square wave, and they do. And anyway, there's a parameters here. Uh, they didn't find the optimum. I just want you to understand they're telling us they don't even have to touch you. I've talked to this about before. There's more evidence here. It's stated right here. I want to read this part of this study from that story to this, down way down in the bottom, right before the results part, our, uh, right before the conclusion. Our results also provide, okay, interjecting, get so excited about this. Uh, they're telling you how they understand you can be affected at a distance. And then you think about what they're telling you about, and I'm, it shouldn't, shouldn't, I shouldn't have to say this, I'll do it anyway. You're already subjected to these stimuli. Hey, moving on, I'll just read it here. Our results also provide a novel perspective. A novel perspective. Something brand new, and I've told you, when you see something that's one-off or brand new, you better start paying attention. Their view is it's a novel perspective on the debate regarding the extent to which explicit versus incidental feedback is optimal for speech learning in adulthood. Explicit feedback is shown to enhance speech learning. Incidental training approaches, for example, video game-based training, can robustly increase speech category learning success. Mecha mechanistically, this effect is linked to an endogenous reinforcement signal that activates the striatum. However, video games also modulate arousal and attention, which may also be a gateway to enhanced category learning success. Pretty cool. Enhanced gateway learning success. I looked at that. Now let's apply what I told you about 180 degrees. You think it's like for learning language. I said, we don't know what they want to teach you. And yet they already know video game. We want to focus on video games. I'm going to suggest at a 25 hertz frequency, the beat frequency that can be created by the electronics that it's around you could stimulate your vagus nerve. And then with your eyeballs looking at your screen and the content that you think is not a video game, the whole thing becomes a video game, you don't know what you're learning. And they already know that they can teach you. I think it's fantastic cool. I, you know, this is like, if I can just get a part of my body to understand it needs to be stimulated a little bit better because I'm a little bit lazy and I can do it from the external, I can learn foreign languages. Boy, this is The Matrix is not a movie here already. Then why not, right? The, that's the cool side. But we don't know what they're wanting us to, to learn, or do we? And then you have your kids. Don't think about you. Think about your, your little goats. They're all sitting there now. And now they got you focused. And this is the other thing. We've identified this long, long ago. They've got you... Huh? It's situated on that internet now, don't they? You, you put your, all these videos now, these tutorials. They've already explained they have experts back there. They're psychology, psychological experts that run this stuff behind the scenes on all of this stuff. It's partly why I don't do tests. They're, every test you take that show how what your IQ is, is taking data about that. They're analyzing everything, things that you have no clue about. I've found out how little I know Again, they know us better than we know ourselves. Or they can study things we don't even know exist about ourselves. And so, I understand. They already understand. That the only debate is how well they're doing to interfere and cause you to learn content we don't know. Right here in this little article, if you want to take a, a view. Now, nerve stimulation and repetitive sound help improve hearing. Nerve stimulation and repetitive sound. If I can impose a... Obje uh, inst uh, stimulus at a distance and I repeat a sound or how about one is ultrasonic but your ear can be affected by your, beer, your, your nerve is being affected by something you can't hear called the electrical impulse in fact the study they did when you read it they found the threshold below, just below which that they could have do the stimulation and the, and the one that they were working on didn't know it was imperceptible but nerve stimulation and repetitive sounds help improve hearing. So they can work to improve your hearing, which is a great idea. Well, they can work to have you improve your hearing to what they're doing, too. 
that can get you to, un here you will start to identify and associate with things that are even less volume, less imposed. Your mind picks it up. Uh, and now we move into the what got me to thinking about this and some other quick research I was doing about this. The at a distance effect that they can do to you, then uh, and then the improvement of your hearing also looks over here optically. And this is a good thing for those of you that are wanting to do this, maybe fit the pro fit the problem you need to solve. But rec but then we recognize that it could be used for for a different purpose together, like binary weaponry. I'm going to speak more on the good side here. If you not not only improving your hearing of things and the stimulation, then the vagus nerve becomes central in a lot of the things in the in that hearing thing and the cognitive learning side. Optically improved mitochondrial function redeems aged human visual decline. So there's light value again, frequency found specific. Now, if you, I'm talking now lots of things here targeted uh, treatment. If you don't target it, you don't get the treatment. You do target it, you do get the treatment. If you haven't got a test, how the heck is your vaccine going to target this as a treatment? Is your answer. There's, it's outside the authority because they can't use it to mitigate the spread. Moving back to here, if your eyes are declining and you're, they say it's getting older, 50 and older, I believe, you'll read it. If you're interested, you'll get this, read it. That ultra, excuse me, uh, almost infrared light frequency helps to build your eyes. It stimulates, I think, the cones, I think they said, in such a way that you can actually improve your eyesight. You can see better. So you can you can see better. I don't know if you if they have the ability to put out, I think it was 670 nanometers of light value. Your screen can be created to make 670 nano, nanometers of light. Or you stare into a light, and they say it can be done with a flashlight, though I couldn't find the 10 LED flashlight that they say is commonly available. Any rate, you gotta look very carefully at what they're doing. That you can improve your eyesight. I guess they could. I just want to point out on the negative side, they can improve your eyesight so you see better, see better what they want you to see. Because along with this, you'll find out that's not the only frequency. There's others, and then that brings up the idea that light, non-direct encroachment, can be used to affect you. It can be used for good, and it can be used for whatever. And so the people that know you better than yourself are on the cutting edge of all that. And at some point, uh, you know, we just expect, notice that there's some studies that they prove certain things. It's been known for a long time, uh, near infrared does do some healthy things. Not every frequency, though. So we're back to resonance. And a, a side note, a quick side note, the 25 hertz I was talking about, that kind of triggered a whole different thought about the shifting, the shifting uh, earth condition. This, the Schumann resonance has been shifting over time, and it's getting a little quicker. Well, I want you to correlate. They didn't. They said 25 hertz, but they didn't find the optimum point. Understand resonance works on, uh, for the most part, equal division. So a quarter wave would be divide 25 by, uh, by by four quarter wave, and you get that number. Well, the Schumann resonance is getting up really close to being a quarter wave of 25 hertz. In other words, what the thought was that the Earth. Uh, resonant, solar resonant natural condition is starting to come into a time when it could be imposing electrical impl influences and maybe particularly those are more corrected, connected to the ground, uh, that it's going to be tuning in to that connection that they're finding enhances your ability to learn. Given that thought and moving one more step, enhancing your ability to learn natural things and naturally Maybe what we've been told would be triggering a higher enlightenment, and you're going to be naturally lifted into this so-called higher frequency. And you're doing it on a quarter. You're because you're a quarter wave resonant antenna, relative to how your nervous system works. Uh, that the information you're going to be given, and I'm hoping this would be true if this is working. The natural information you give, we're going to be giving, helping you as an antidote to ration to be able to avoid the mass of people that don't. This is going to cause strife as well. The negative side of that is that artificially being done, like you see in the vagus nerve, artificially means someone's controlling it, not nature. And without getting too esoteric and all that, I just found that little study, the 25 hertz, pretty interesting relative to an increasing Schumann resonance, knowing that there's electrical ground currents. And if I'm going too far for some people, I apologize. It's just that's where I'd rather be talking 
that's what I'd rather be doing. But we are stuck in this artificial paradigm we have to throw off. Now, I wouldn't be, I said, I wouldn't be doing any of this if I, if we weren't being stopped and obstructed from doing what we want and what we would will absent the imposition. Anyway, interesting optically improved myocardial function. Your eyes can get better by looking into, and I'd study this a bit and I'd understand it before you just start blinding yourself, blinding, you just not any light works and, and not any flashlights the right frequency. You really may have to get the right one and build it. They say it can be done for $15. You can enhance your eyesight to some extent with this therapy. Again, not even no, 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 known or new, but it is uh, now shown in study. My utilizing of it here is to show you can be affected at a distance, whether that's good or bad. You can have your capacities increased on certain things that you then also can be interject, injected with without knowing it. And I don't mean the vaccine. I'm talking about your maybe, well, your bewilderment, <laughs> your wanting your, oh, the other thing, I forgot to read that part. It On the second part, that was most actually most important. They explain that that test, that stimulation test, is known. Let me read it. These findings provide further evidence Together, our results demonstrate the non-invasive transcutaneous vagus nerve stimulation in humans can enhance speech category learning in a highly specific manner. These findings provide further evidence, further, they've already been on it, further evidence that peripheral neuromodulation may be a useful tool for augmenting behavioral and perceptual paradigms, including higher level cognitive tasks with a speech with as speech and sound learning and uh folks higher behavioral and perceptual paradigms so at a distance they can cause they know they can cause this this is one of the techniques that they're telling us that they likely are using and that your technology you have around you i don't see any limitation on on that being able to function in the capacity that they already know and have found founding finding further evidence of it so declining eyesight improved by looking at deep light. Again, light waves can affect you, all right? Frequencies of things you can't feel can affect you. Now, I suppose infrared, you'd feel heat, but okay, so given that's not the point. I mean, there's other frequencies that can do harm as well. And so I brought that up. You can get that from uh, as a link to track back. I gave you, I gave you the, the, the studies you can read. Now... Moving again into, we, before we said you're vulnerable in your, in your digital, that's what they want to bring on. The contact tracing of the pandemic was what that was about, bringing in the focus on the phone. We now hear Qualcomm chips are completely vulnerable to whatever. And uh, then we hear this as we moved in. Also, they'd move in in what? Austerity? And then they control your economy and they control your buying power. And you're all stuck to this once a fiat system that they digitize. And now we see the fruition of our of our statements before come as a statement and a, they're saying it's going to be a deed they're working toward it the fed is expected to make a major commitment to ramping up inflation soon if you haven't already feel to, felt it already i don't know but here they're intending to do it on the on the system control side fed reserve board chairman jerome powell speaks during a press conference following the federal open market meeting on the January the 29th of 2020, he says, this is back when, as we are going into this thing. In a few next few months, the Federal Reserve will be solidifying a policy outward, uh, solidifying a policy outline that would commit uh, it to low rates for years as it pursues an agenda of higher inflation and return to the full employment picture that vanished as the coronavirus pandemic hit. Now, how he's talking about that and haven't as it hasn't really worked yet, it's pretty insightful as well, I found. But this is an agenda of higher inflation. If you folks on can see that where this was going, position yourself so you're not going to be affected and bewildered by the plan. And if you do so, you are not affected. That's for you. The rest of everybody, you're looking at the you're looking at lunatics. You're looking at the bewildered. The Bewildered Beasts. Maybe that's the title of the show. Bewildered Beasts. That's what we'll be 
because that's the plan. Are you going to allow that? Uh, it's really the point. I, I don't know what more to say. Are we going to continue to be bewildered? Our bewilderment equates as well to inaction based on what we think we know, what we think we see, all of our insight, all of our professed knowledge that doesn't turn to, to an action. And so we have multiple layers of defense having to have to go on. They're telling you there's been an agenda of inflation. Count on it, folks. This is not even new, but they're telling you. That's the, the admission by those that would destroy you. If you are so positioned, that's the point. I try, again, you, I, I ask you to do things without jeopardy. That's that condition. Find the path that you can still be functional and not be affected or so much so that you're ineffectual. Hopefully you're doing it and you can't be affected at all. Now, the truth coming out. Now we're moving back into the thing that helped to initiate this. I'm back into that. I've got a bunch of, of information Really, in a way, for those of you that are understanding the history and need to understand or even copy and paste so you can quickly go and develop, build your documents to explain to uh, someone, a trier, if I haven't explained this either, a trier of fact on a condition, let's say, for your habeas or even a letter. You, you don't talk without, you always make your statements proofed, provable, statements of fact that explain the condition to someone who is completely at, uh, clueless, completely in, unknowledgeable about a condition. Always read your document, not through your eyes, but it's like it's a good tool to hand it to someone and say, do you understand what I'm talking about here? And then you, you quiz them on it. And you know what you're quizzing them on is whether or not really what you're doing if you did it technically correct, because you, know you know what the technical correctness is. You're wondering whether or not you've communicated that. And if you haven't, edit it, fix it. Get it back into shape. And so here these, these things will come up forward. Remember I've told you, you know, kind of uh, one of the streams today was this kind of doing mitigation values without that test, having a mitigation strategy without a foe, or how the foe attacks you, is evidence right here. Again, this, and this is not news, uh, oh, sensationalism. This is, you start to use this to help protect you. It becomes one of the list of things that shows they don't have a clue, and they don't care to have a clue, and they are okay with doing less than or, or adequate. On the other hand, I'll show you a document that says that, that it's re some of this efficacy is required, but not, not absolutely necessary. And these are the kinds of things you have to understand walking into these ideas. When you write something or you communicate, you answer to this, uh, what was it, the, they gave the Judge Navarro, uh, the... Uh, what was a D word? Darn it, just slipped my mind. The discretion. Yeah? You have to answer to and destroy the discretion. Fauci warns COVID-19 vaccine may only be 50% or 60% effective. Dr. Anthony Fauci, remember, Fauci means figuratively to fall prey to. And boy, haven't we on the world scale. The top U.S. infectious disease expert and untouchable purveyor of all that is true and holy in science today told the Brown University panel on Friday that probabilities of highly effective COVID-19 vaccine are not great. So, okay, I mean, again, we could read, but the chances of it being 95%, 98% effective are not great, even though they expect that we don't know if it will be 50 to 60% effective, the efficacy point. Do you get shocked? Yeah, it's pretty shocking that they're willing to pull this out on what what do you do with it? You explain that the mitigation that they're doing, not only do they not know what to do, if they don't have the test, they haven't identified the infectious agent, the infectious disease expert hasn't have an infectious that he's declared and proven because there is no test. How can he be okay? saying that there's going to be a 50% efficacy rate. How can he even say that at all? It is a fraud. It's a lie. It's a color of authority he's using to destroy you. That's felony. Then where do I get that? I keep people getting people not quite understanding what I'm saying. Those definitions are crimes in your state. They're called extortion or coercion. 
They're not called co extortion necessarily. They're talking about, you see the definition where someone of official or unwar an un comes unwarranted without title or interest to something and takes it from you. That's extortion. The right, a pertinent that, or the right on its own, that's coercion. It's felony. Why do I go there? Because every misdemeanor can be ignored, if you hadn't known. So apparently, back over at the Bundy case, uh, willful dereliction of duty to provide due process must be only a, a misdemeanor. And so it doesn't rise. And this is why, when I'm telling you things, it has a basis for why. I just don't talk. There's, and I just don't have the time to go through what I, why I've come here, all the stuff that's got me to come here. You do felonies because that's the only thing that a prosecutor is required to prosecute. So when you go in and if you ever get to the point where you're saying, oh, well, okay, Mr. Official, with the duty to listen and do something with it, Title 18 U.S.C. 4 says, now that I've told you, you have to do something. And if you don't, Title 18 U.S.C. 3 says you are guilty of misprison of whatever that crime was. And so you put upon the official that has the power, uh, the duty to do something, the the obligation. And if more of us were doing that that way instead of what I hear going on, or nothing at all, we may have a different day and different pressure coming. Anyway, he's saying that these things, he, he has no thought. He has no thought this is going to work. And why would he? There is no test. They don't even know what they're fighting, right? They're fighting, what does it say? Highly effective COVID-19 vaccines are not, are, are not great. The probabilities. Why? Because COVID-19 is a set of what? Symptoms. It's not an infectious agent. The infectious disease experts only speaking from the disease side. When you all figure this out, that you have to add the causative factor, the infectious part, the transmissible agent, as I see written in some states, you'll understand how the trick is done. Whether you'll care anymore, I don't know. You need to care, but whether you care, I don't know. But once you realize why I keep saying there is no test, almost like a broken record. In fact, I'm almost thinking maybe I should just stop because it doesn't seem like anybody's responding, but I do know that it's so important. I may actually press a little bit harder, even though it makes me sound um, like a broken record, because it is so fundamental to everything that you're experiencing and suffering, and suffer is that you continue to allow it to go instead of stopping it. COVID-19 vaccine may be only 50 to 60% effective. I don't even know what the heck they're talking about there. I mean, I kind of think I know what they're talking about. But I really, effective in what way? We're not talking about the people that would allow it, because that's 44% saying no. We're talking about itself, and then to what end? Effective to do what? There's no test. Oh, did you get that, I hope? How easy that is. You're doing what with that? 50% effective to 60% for what? Is it an admission? Like I told you, they can't make a, a, a flu symptom a flu symptom vaccine because a flu symptom vaccine can be, have many causes, so it can only it's only going to maybe, maybe address 50% of those based in what? The antibody response, not the infectious agent? Again, when you break this down, when you finally settle down and think about it, you'll be able to articulate this in your mind. And I think also for those of you wanting to write things, letters or request, records request or your habeas or another remedy, or just, again, not even a letter of demand, more a letter of inquiry to find out what, you are able to lay it out, eat simple sentence before, after simple sentence that in five or so six sentences you have laid out the point. You can refer to all the history before that they already know. Then you just lay out the requirements of the law as the elements not not fulfilled. And then you ask, how has a vaccine stopped symptoms when it was supposed to be going to stop or counter, mitigate the infectious agent? Can you, can you tell me where you're certified to that? And when you did, what test did you use? Because not even the CDC or FDA or the WHO, not the Rock Group or the OWL, but the World Health Organization doesn't know. They don't know because they don't even think that there's a pandemic. How do I know that? We got the paperwork here, folks. I got it collected it all up. Again, as I've told you, it was determined to be as a pandemic, and the characterization as a pandemic did not change the WHO assessment. 
And so without this understanding, the, how can he even come up with 50%? It, it can't. It's a fraud right there. That statement's a fraud. You don't use it because you can call them a fraud. You need to throw it in there to use it because that's the mitigation potential that they say. And what that does, it reproves they don't know what they're doing. And that's proved because they never certified to one. Now I'm back to point one again on my short list on how we get there. How am I saying that? Your state codes have the process they were supposed to follow. I'm not making any of that up. I've read a few of them now. It's all the same. And then, so what's the mitigation strategy? I, I've told you I'm not, gonna, I'm not promoting this next little thing here, but it's there for those of you that might need it in the right stage, in the right place, without the underlying problems that this uh, you have to be careful of. But this guy, Fauci, who says that he's smiling at you saying, oh, we're willing to put on a 50 to 60 percent eff efficacious product that we, uh, against something we've never tested for. He knew, Fauci knew that HCQ, hydroxychloroquine, in 2005, nobody needed to die. Well, doesn't that sound just like that uh, Dr. Emmanuel out of Houston? Fauci knew. An article you can go back and get the story back through. This came up again. These, these tabs are just stories I throw up. I said, yeah, I throw them up. Yeah, uh, okay. Maybe not that way, but pretty sickening to watch this condition continue with all this proof showing that where he's figuring out how do you use this. He's figuring that a 50, for six, 50 to 60 percent vaccine efficacy is good when he already knew the same guy, this infectious disease, already knew he said in 2005 that hydroxychloroquine would do what? Would act like the, the Dr. Emmanuel said. So what are you doing now? Now you're taking away his expert status just by making two sentences pointing out the what? The incongruity. How did this broadcast last week get uh, van vanquished, vanished, banned from YouTube when I'm using the very same documents that these guy officials use from the same organizations to show how they're not congruent with themselves, invalidating them in law, that we get banned. To me, even if I put this on a neutral plane, people in, in YouTube are just ignorant fools like the rest of society. Oh, I may, he mentioned COVID-19. He must be talking against the official record. They don't even listen. That's part of the thing I wanted to inquire about, actually, if I was going to do a response. I'm still working that out in my mind. Got too much to think about to focus, but I'm, I'm really more interested in the inquiry. Did they even listen to the broadcast? Did they even go to the broadcast or look at the links? I'm using government documents. This gentleman points this out in this article. Fauci knew. Right, chloroquine is a potential inhibitor of SARS coronavirus infection and spread. Well, there is no test. I still don't understand this, but let's go with it. Fauci knew. The NIH.gov knew. So you can't tell me that when we say that there's a treatment available called hydroxychloroquine, however it's administered by a doctor relevant to your underlying condition, which you really have to be careful of. I explained this. It was explained to me through even Wikipedia. We had to be careful. It is a a prescription type of material. What? There's already evidence people not understanding what it is and go drink what aquarium cleaner and killing themselves. So come on. Chloroquine is a potential inhibitor. A potent, not, excuse me, a potent, not a potential here, a potent inhibitor of SARS, coronavirus infection, and spread. How do you use it? Again, you counter what he says. He's willing to take a vaccine of 50% efficacy over what he already knows is a potent inhibitor. Not only does it help, like the Dr. Emanuel said, if you get in early, it will. it's a prophylactic to keep it from you. And I'm saying this again. I'm not into drugs. If you can do it otherwise, don't require it. Don't get into it. it this is These things can be seriously uh, hurtful. It's, uh, to me, it's like an herbal thing. Serious herbs are deal, are, only can be used during serious matters that they pertain to. You use them outside that, they'll probably kill you. When you have the thing that it's a fix, you can't be killed in a way. You keep it within reason. You really have to be attuned to that. Not giving any advice, I guess I have to give the disclaimer. That's the way I look at this stuff, how I start to approach a problem. Chloroquine is a potential inhibitor. Fauci knew that. A potential inhibitor versus a 50 to 60% efficacy that they don't never have the test on to figure out what that's supposed to be is what you say to show the mitigation is failed, fraudulent, known to be different, 
and can't be other than failed and fraud and known to be different because they're what? There is no test for what? The infectious agent as the local jurisdiction, probably everybody in the world, are required to certify to. That's just not somebody saying, oh, did you know there's SARS-CoV-2 out there? No, 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 no. You Stop that lie as well. That's what you put, that that's been a presumption, like they say, it adopted by the foreign government of a warring country, and then they, it wasn't supposed to be adopted as, as gospel. They were supposed to see a turn and see whether or not that was a war maneuver and whether or not we had something actual to worry about our people. No, no, no. They just assumed, assumed on it. That, that's not an assessment of certification. You can state that. So, exclusive, hidden docs... The FDA doc explains why liar Fauci opposes hydroxychloroquine. Now, this I had to move up for sound minds. I've had to move this up from way at the back. I misplaced this one. This attaches to the next document, which is the document from the FDA for the standard. I'm going to use this to introduce that document. Exclusive hidden FDA doc explains why liar Fauci opposes. Remember, Fauci is the, figuratively to fall prey to. I mean, his name, this is crit, This is just... I don't know what, how much more perfect could this happen to give you notice, to not be bewildered, right? This is the whole thing I try to talk about. Stop our bewilderment even in an action because we know so much. It's not going to stop that agenda. We just, they're just waiting for us to be demoralized, to not act, to counter the action. It requires our action. Exclusive hidden doc. Well, the, the reason why it's hidden because it's no longer available. That's what they say in the article. But what I want to point out here. I'm not even sure if this article is correct, but the point is they provide you with the FDA licensure slides that you can read. And their argument here is that the hydrochloroquine could have been given emergency use authorization. And then they go through an analysis. And the reasoning why that hasn't is because they're actually, if you will, conflict of interest. See, Fauci, this is where you get Fauci again on his 50, 50 to not 60, where he already knows there's something that's potent to stop it, that they're saying that they're not giving that to hydrochloroquine because they're conflicted of interest for the money and the imposition of a vaccine of which they couldn't give to the vaccine if they give it to one other. And so that part's an interesting angle of why you might be able to proffer that as a potential illicit action by the government. My thought about this was when you read the slides, however, is that it's not supposed to be applied to any new, any existing medicine. If I understood this right, hydroxychloroquine has been since the 40s, and that's, it does, it wouldn't, it wouldn't need this emergency use, which is all a fraud. The whole thing becomes a fraud, not just this hidden doc says it, 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 it says this. It's that it wouldn't, if, it, if it's, if I read correctly, that an existing medication can't given emergency use authorization, then it couldn't qualify anyway. But guess what? That brings us back to it exists and can be used for off uh, off uh, what uh, treatments. The unauthorized, I can't say unauthorized, the, the recommended treatment. You can use, as a doctor, you can use it where you believe you have the evidence that it could work. Well, Fauci said it works. So Dr. Emanuel at Houston, all those other doctors, the frontline doctors, they can't, I told you, they can't be wrong. Even in the FDA, we brought up the FDA. Again, that was in that uh, banned YouTube. How can they say I wasn't following the FDA, the, uh, the FDA's governmental considerations when they had no consideration? Shows you that the YouTube is either re really, really stupid like the rest of society, or they don't read. They're, they're really, really intelligent, but not intelligent enough to go read the links on how the proof is made. At any rate, uh, lots of ground, I guess, for those that, that want to. Uh, but the exclusive doc explains uh, why the liar Fauci opposes hydrochloroquine. He's not a liar because of that FDA doc. And I don't even know that this doc actually proves that it would need it. In fact, I think it says what I said before. They don't need it. In fact, they had no authority to diminish it. And we found that last week using one of their docs that it didn't. They said the FDA doesn't ban it now. They caution that it needs to be used in a hospital setting with a doctor. Why? Because of potential heart rhythm problems. Okay, so nothing I said that I, I mean, even thinking back through my content, and I try not to make an ex a mistake once, even though I may misspeak a bit, 
the principles I'm speaking to or the support is there once you finally get that organized in case I do misspeak. The foundational documents are there from the government to show you they're lying to you. They're talking out of both sides of their mouth. They speak with forked tongue. Okay? And that's what causes the bewilderment that the Protocol 5 speaks to that you have, you are obligated to eliminate. Right? Hopefully for yourself, certainly, and then hopefully for the rest. I hope I try to do weekly just getting people to understand this thing and beyond just, oh, yeah, listen to some cool ideas. Really start working with it. Study finds hydroxychloroquine. And I want to put out, I keep on forgetting, there's chloroquine and then there's quinine. They, I think, if I remember right, these are derivatives of this whole quinine for malaria thing. Very interesting to me, just that a, an anti anti-malarial affects these systems in your body. And it, what it does is it, it happens to condition how your body responds to these things. That's why it's working. And apparently, for mal that's why it's not really the uh, uh, parasitic problem, uh, a parasite problem. It's just affecting how the cell can do what it does or can't do what it does. It interferes with that, generally, in your body. Study finds hydroxychloroquine help coronavirus patients survive better. How they figure out it was coronavirus, I don't know, but apparently doctors were helping people. Again, this is your right to have the medical care that would work for you. And this is countering the, well, again, 50 to 60 percent that the expert wants to uh, rely on when he knows there's something that's better. And now you get him in the administrative problem where now you want to bring up kind of like the NEPA they were required to balance the risk-benefit relative to what's available. Their mitigation strategy needed to utilize hydrochloroquine in some regard, and they knew that, and they didn't. And then you might have a nefarious reason why. But the reason why it's not consistent with their prior holdings as well, even if I give them good faith, is because why? There is no test for an infectious agent causing the epidemic that moved from outbreak to a regional area, the state in these cases, that which moved in internationally to two different zones in the world from which the, the pandemic could be declared under pandemic rule, from the WHO, which never happened. That's why they went as a pandemic, characterized as a pandemic. But the word characterized means obligation. They put the obligation as a pandemic, but it never existed. They, they, they clarify that, that, that describing it that way doesn't change its assessment. And so we, that's no authority. That's how you use that. And we, that did not and in any way interfere with the obligation, local obligation. They, the local authorities could not take their obligation and duty to assess and certify, eliminate it, no matter what the WHO or the CDC or FDA says, is the other point about that. Why? It's written in black and white what they were supposed to do and obligated to do. Pre, and then we have this other condition. Again, all built on the fact there is no test. In the question that we don't even know what we're testing for, with the findings that, well, remember we were talking T-cells. This is a friend of mine, a colleague, sent this up. He goes, hey, we were talking about T-cells. You were talking about T-cells. Here's a, here's a new study. And so I got it from him. They're now starting to focus on this relative to SARS-CoV-2 is the T-cells. But the T-cells mean that you already have fought it, and you're not likely going to get it again. And if you do, your body's ready. Here we go. Pre-existing immunity to SARS-CoV-2, the knowns and unknowns. Now, I have, I think, two links for this. One was dated in July and one's in, in August. I'm not quite sure why, but they say the similar thing, the same thing here. Abstract T-cell reactivity against SARS-CoV-2 was observed in unexposed people. However, the source and clinical relevance of the reactivity remains unknown. It is speculated that this reflects T-cell memory to circulating common cold coronaviruses. Remember, there's like eight of them now. SARS is two. There's six, uh, seven or six others. It will be important to define specificities of these T cells and assess their association with COVID-19 disease severity and vaccine responses. What do you get out of this? They don't know. 
They see a T cell response. They see immune systems working. Is anybody doing a T cell test? No. Why not? Well, why would they? They've never, there is no test for an infectious agent to focus on this, is there? But what you do is you find there's an alternative. The alternative is an unknown that ought to have been done. You put this as a counterpoint. You stop the bewilderment under why this is going in all directions, and there's no foundation on the experts who are supposed to have one. Am I saying that because, oh, I, they're supposed to do it? No, the law says that. That's not my imposition. Local authority would be to assess and certify. That's the duty and obligation of the health department before they move it into, uh, they certify to what? That it exists for the outbreak they have. But there is no test. How do they get on? I don't know, but science jumps on it and says, hey, we see some T-cell activity, SARS-CoV-2. How they did that, I don't know. But they show you they don't know. They found the T-cell response, but they don't know what causes it. What does that mean? It's in you already. And this is what you see in this report. It's already pre-existing. Did Fauci put that into the into his equation about why 50 to 60 percent effective? Maybe they're looking at the wrong parameters if they don't know what they're looking at. They're actually harming you with this stuff. Oh, and there's evidence of that. Again, you can go on and on. That would be in the mo if I call it the module that you put together for how the mitigation, because there is no test and there isn't an infectious agent, how the mitigation measures would fall short. And here's the proof that they do. And you just do simple re referencing to that. Pre-existing immunity to SARS-CoV-2, the knowns and unknowns. July of this year, they talk about the T-cells. If you have a pre-existing pre immunity and they're not testing for it, why aren't they? You have the reason that they're walking blind into this. And you, with this alone would likely be able to stop any mitigation strategy at all, whether it's a, anything. Will the Bar Association allow that on that on that? Bear assessment? Likely not. I'm just telling you that have we had, if we had justice, it would. Together with, the, if there is no test and they don't know what they're doing, the fact that they're not testing for T cell immunity to see the act, maybe why there's an asymptomatic condition. Maybe we're all, uh, all have our immunities to most circulating coronavirus, common cold. A few of us with underlying Pre-existing medical conditions are the ones that are being taken down. Even if those, see the asymptomatic, you have an asymptomatic pre-existing condition, didn't you? Did they check for that? No. Well, there's evidence for it, but no, they didn't. So my point is, how do you use this? You can articulate these points with these proofs to show the mitigation they're trying even if you give it to them, if they, even if they certified, see this is where you kill that other side, even if they find the infectious agent, they're not doing the test to see how many of us don't need it. And then they're willing to put a 50% 50, 50 efficacious condition on something they know could be stopped if they just use Harlech hydrochloroquine, the same guy. Fauci knew this. Why wasn't he offering that as well? See, it doesn't make the record. He's wrong then. He's outside of his authority. I don't care how eminent he might be. Uh, early on now, this was interesting to me. I think it was done back in January. I can't see the date yet. Uh, COVID-19, knowns, unknowns, and questions. Interesting names. The titling was really similar. What I want to offer this, and we're going to move on quick, look at this as a highlight. You'd have to qualify it, but copy and paste the history of this. You could do that to your documents. Copy and paste them. Uh, once you qualify, it's accurate history. If you don't want to spend the time to type out the, if you want to, if it's your remedy to explain how you got to a spot. In other words, you might want to do this one because it discusses who buy. It discusses where it came from. If you're going to then follow up and say, but that was a presumption and that there was an obligation locally, you want to create this history so you can also add that. You would you co simply copy and paste this one, and then you would you qualify that it's accurate. And you could use this, and you don't have to have to type so much. You just understand the principle under it. Okay? So I'm, gonna, I'm putting this tab in, COVID-19 knowns and unknowns and questions, as a reference to maybe copy and pasting things of information, factual information, that is that you don't have to go research loss and think that you have lots of citation to make. If you, what you do is you qualify this against other proofs, and then you just have those ready. You put those in your back pocket. They don't make it into your document. Uh, whatever it is, whether letter, whatever, whatever. And so, I mean, I could actually use, as I think about it, I could use this to point out this is the history named in this study, and it was been presumed that SARS-CoV-2 
But what the law here in this in this county or this state requires an assessment and certification to that. Can you show me where your certification is and what test you used? I just okay there. Period. There's your letter. Just using something that's just a reference here. I'm not even going to respond to it a lot about, a lot more. Okay, so that you don't have to get so complicated if you're feeling uneasy or whatever. I don't know what your apprehensions are, but uh, that, I'm trying to show you it's not the excuses to not engage yourself here on this to protect yourself are really, really spacious. There's just not valid. None of it. I've found, I've not heard one yet. Unless you're on your deathbed, I don't, and even then I wonder. You know, maybe it, are they blaming it on COVID? Maybe you have better a bigger thing to say. But anyway, moving on, and what this if efficacy of the 50%, 60% lack of efficacy, it's just not not working. It'll kill you. The four Ukrainian soldiers died after having an American COVID-19 vaccine tested on them. This is deadly stuff, folks. They're going to say they got it all worked out, but see, this is risk benefit, risk management. This is not, not that they want to do anything. They just want to claim that this was going to be mitigating something they don't even know. They don't even know what they're up against, and now it's killing people. There's an evidence on why you don't want it and because it's been shown not to. Now, by the time it gets to being used, they will have excused this away. You're going to have to keep up with that to show how that, again, is a color of authority felonies against you and by omission to declare even the stuff they knew. See, the omission to declare hydrochloroquine was known to do what it is as a potent inhibitor is a felony against you if they don't offer it. If you've under, been under, listening to what I've been saying for years, this is a dynamic. You can use, it's a double-edged sword, and, and we all always think about the pointy, pointy end with the blades on each end. I'm asking you to grab the handle. They handed you a, they handed you a double-edged sword. They were holding the point of it. What are you going to do with that when they, they're going to threaten you with that, your life with that end? Wouldn't you grab the handle? That's what you have to do. Don't jump on the side of the sword and run into it. Four Ukrainian soldiers die. I don't even know if I talk about this stuff. You see the evidence. Now, be careful in the future. They'll probably work through that. It'll be okay. Uh, interesting, four soldiers died and not civilians. I wonder about that. This is in the same part of the country that uh, where the Georgia has that special little lab as we talked to Luger Institute. I just kind of had a thought about that. But uh, states have authority to fine and jail people who refuse coronavirus vaccine, attorney says. Another are, if you don't think this is going serious, this is where I want to go. It's getting serious. This is going to be a the epitome of pressure against you that you're going to have to respond to, they're claiming that you can have, this is a scare tactic at this point too, fines or jail against something that's 50 to 60% effective against something they don't even know about that kills people. Should be in your word, in your vocabulary, in your affidavit. Remember now, when you write these papers, if you're going to make it a legal evidence, it has to be in the form of an affidavit. And and you can use two Two witnesses if you want. That's not necessary. If you are in the system already, don't worry about going and getting a notary. That's actually more efficient, and it's more recognizable to the system. It accepts that as, as its factual evidence, and the entry agent called the notary republic is that certifier. So I hear lots of dynamic on this, and I've done it both ways. When you have the ability to get a notary, it's not so bad to get one. Because if you go to two witnesses, you then have to call them in on a case. If you get the notary in the state, see, the notary is in their state, their entry agent for evidence. It's accepted as valid when the notary of their state, whatever state it is, is put before the court on evidence. Don't be careful on this patriot nonsense that's been going out there. Really study this if that's what you want to do. But anyway, you, you build this in, get, your, get, the, get the statement about how this works that I just said just a few set moments ago that they are willing to put a fine in jail upon people, as we heard last week. Okay? You're going to have to be able to address this stuff at some point. Not everybody may be at all at once. This is certainly going to be rolled out. But there's responses coming out. You have to have this before you get there on your own. But now Minnesota governor sued by voters over contradictory mass. I found this fascinating. Just they promote, it's only the voters. What happened to you, folks, the men and women uh, that are not voters? Why only the voters? But they're doing this in the federal court. And I said, don't go to the federal court. And they did. And they went going to the federal court. What they did is, though, is they went up. And then you got to look very carefully. Again, there's, a, there's always specific matter, subject matter specific complaints by the case. 
they're going there, and I don't know if this is such a bad deal because what they're doing is they're saying the state has has two different laws that oppose each other. Talk about 180 degrees, and now you walk in and you talk about the 180 degrees of obligation you have, and you can't fulfill both. One uh, one law in Minnesota says that the wearing a mask is a crime, and then the health order says you got to wear a mask. And so this is going to be an interesting thing, but what does it do? It agrees you have to wear the mask. So caution, Minnesota sued. Anybody in Minnesota, I don't know where this case is, so you'd have to look at it. And I don't know what it would cost. The habeas is a lot cheaper. That's the other thing that you can do when you got no money, you know, and the money's being tough, being beat down because of the, you have no way to get it because they got you all locked down. The habeas makes a better answer there, but this may cause a little bit more money where you consider, folks, so those of you that are close, consider at the federal level, this is going to be a few hundred, three, four hundred dollars if you do it like this. Consider, to get into the case, consider joining the case and then ar- then submitting an argument that hasn't been placed before them and deny that the mass, not only is the two laws uh, opposing that you can't follow at the same time, but that you have this imposition where there is no test and you go through your state laws again. Now, this is going to take a higher caliber entry, but... Again, I look at these things as opportunities anymore. They want you to not respond. I'm looking for ways to respond. And this is an opportunity for, for that to happen. You join into the case and you bring the argument that hasn't been brought. And don't bring an argument. You bring the facts that haven't been actually pled to show that that question may not even be valid if the court will find that there was no compliance due process, was violated in the state to even put the imposition and the mitigation strategy without the test, without the transmission mode, and without a study and assessment for what would mitigate this thing they don't know about. And I just did it again. A couple seconds and you got the whole point. Esteemed French uh, doctor Didier Riol testifies person behind death threats. He received at a top doctor linked to Gilead Pharmaceuticals. Read the story. This is no joke. This is big business, big money. Why uh, Fauci won't uh, talk about hydroxychloroquine? while well, they'll reserve the, the hydro, take out the hydrochloroquine to reserve it to vaccines. All right, the, the emergency use. But people are moving. There's, uh, there's esteemed uh, witnesses, doctors, that are th- being threatened because of their findings about, in this case, hydro, hydroxychloroquine. I've talked about this doctor before. Virginia governor requests ban on evictions, but economic impact draws concern. Those of you that are landlords are being destroyed by this. And it goes on. I have a whole bunch of links I won't be able to get to. UK Town Council powers the bulldozer contaminated homes uh, can uh, to contain uh, to contain outbreak. They can bulldoze your house in the Ukraine. You better be listening to what I've been saying. Melbourne cops may now enter your homes without a warrant after 11 people die of COVID. They don't know that in Australia. This is madness, not democracy. Well, do something about it. I'm just going through really quickly. Yale professor says students will have to get the vaccine anyway. If you don't hear the problem that and that I've been explaining on how to fight this and go after this, this is what's coming down on you. America could control the pandemic by October from the New York Times, absolutely destroying you through this suggestion. And a complaint was, well, they're, they're bringing in Stalin, Stalinist pr- principles. And I responded, and you all watched. Yes, they're bringing on them through your bewilderment because you're not responsive. Thank you, Grimner, for what you do at reallibertymedia.com. Jules, what you did to keep the broadcast up, sound minds. Thank you, normalization of ignorance. And uh, the rest of you all that thumbs up and like and send around and spread the word, folks. I'll be with you next week. Tech diffs are nature willing. another lesson. I hope with today's information you can take it to those that misbehave. From behind the woodshed, leaving his mark on the beast, this is Hal Anthony. Till next time, Journey with Purpose.
opening up a can of whoop-ass feels like. Son, you just opened a whole case of whoop-ass. 